Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Your very informative address. Um, we have a short time for questions. Um, people wish to ask a question, would you kindly indicate your name and if applicable um, the organisation um, that you either work for or represent? Yes. My name is Minna Singh Batra, and uh, I'm uh, a convener for human rights and United, uh, United Nations representative of Australia and Australia. Um, my question was about those Indian pins. And uh, um, I'm wondering what ultimately happened, because the, the, the details of the story is that this Australian couple who, who wanted this uh, child publicity in India and a surrogate mother. They didn't expect to have twins. Uh, they had twins, and one was a boy and the other girl. They wanted the girl, and they kept the girl. And they were easily allowed to bring her back. And that boy in the middle. And uh, there's another uh, style of it is that in India, they prefer to keep it because they get more money out of that. <laughs> and in Australia, they wanted this girl. What has happened about it? I don't know the end result of it. Because the, the, the Indian lawyers were uh, kind of uh, insisting that these both children belong to that couple, that they should have it, and they should pay extra for that. And uh, these are the things I've heard from the other Indians. And uh, I'm wondering what's happened ultimately. You must. Well, I don't. I don't know. Um, and I think that um, the ABC have been doing their best to find out with FOI requests from DFAT. Um, and I know Chief Judge Pascoe from the Federal Circuit Court has been looking at this. But um, uh, what I, the point that I'd, I'd like to make is, is this. I, I mean, I think that. I, I don't think it's that hard to devise something to prevent that from happening. I mean, that child, other child, was entitled to Australian citizenship. If we had some requirement that the, the parents bring the child back to Australia, if they wanted to have the child adopted out in Australia, it was perfect, they were perfectly able to do so. Right. Why would you not want to do that? That's what I find so extraordinary. And I think if we could have some laws that kind of regulate that, I, all this fully, um, but for example, you could have a provision that if you didn't want the child, then the uh, director of human services in each of the states might, or, or even the minister for immigration, who's, who's now responsible for refugee children, the minister of immigration could be the guardian of these children and could make an application for the passport on behalf of the children to bring the children into Australia. So I, I actually think there are. There are ways in which we could ensure that, that doesn't happen again, but we have to do something. Okay. Thank you. Christian, I'll be back. Uh, hi, my name is Nai. Uh, I'm a GP from Southern Islands. Um, I think I know a bit of that story that uh, the lady asked. And uh, what happened was, I think I read it in ABC or Sydney Morning Herald's. Uh, the, the High Commissioner was informed that, uh, that the other child was given to the friend of that parents. But actually later they found out actually there was no relationship and they suspected of uh, actually being sold to a totally stranger. Um, yeah, that's the end of the story as far as I know. But uh, my question would be um, the as you discuss about the possible legality of the uh, commercial service here, I'm not sure how keen the politicians are to discuss about that issue because I barely heard about that. Do you know anything about that? Is there anything? Because they are the one who need to change the laws. Mm -hmm. 
One can only glean how uh, enthusiastic they are to change the laws about when you look at what they're prepared to do about it. Um, and I have to say, they haven't been prepared to do much about it so far. Um, this is why I think we just need to, to do everything we can to press, I would say, first for as soon as we can for a proper inquiry and then to press for something to happen. But the more noise we all make about it, the more likely it is to happen. My name is Miranda Montrone, I'm a psychologist and I work in Sydney. Um, I have about 20 years experience working with surrogacy. After six surrogacy in Australia, I've done a lot. We do it really well here and it really, we do it very well in so many ways. The rights of all are respected. The intended parents, the surrogate and her partner and her family and the offspring. And as you so rightly say, we've had many inquiries that have shown us how to do it. We do it. What I'm interested in, my question is, is in New South Wales since 2010, it has been illegal for people to go overseas. And I find it fascinating that the impunity of people to pay no attention to committing an illegal act. How would it change, that they consider it obviously irrelevant, how would that change if we bring in commercial surrogacy here and we set it up properly as we would do? Um, how would that change? Because it would probably still be done cheaper and probably less well overseas. How would that change that they would yeah, how would you stop from doing How would you stop that? That's the question. If it's not working now. I think you, you'll never get a perfect solution. And one of the things I do want to say, and I say this before, if you're, just because there isn't a perfect solution doesn't mean we shouldn't try and do something. And that's what um, I spoke recently at um, something in Brisbane. There were a lot of young lawyers there, and when I spoke, they got up and asked questions about, oh, wouldn't this, it couldn't do that, it couldn't do that. And my point is, there are things we can do. We should be trying to do what we can. I realise it's not a perfect world. But um, uh, I'm supported in, in, in this view by Stephen Page, who's a lawyer who, who does most of the surrogacy in Australia, very ethical, I might say. Um, and, uh, you know, as I said, these organisations obviously have business models. I mean, we, we wouldn't eradicate entirely if we commercialised, we legalised in Australia, people going to other countries. They would, some would still go. Some would, many people would want to do it in Australia, others would they still want to use Asian countries because they're cheaper. But the clinics there have business models and if we made it, if we made conditions on bringing children back into Australia, uh, then they will understand that's the business model. And if they want to be paid by Australians who are going there, then they will start to comply. So you, know, you won't get it, it won't be perfect, but I think that there are things that we can do. Stop doing trying to do them just because nothing's perfect. There was a gentleman towards the front and the right um, who had turned up before. No, I did. Oh, sorry. In the middle. <coughs> Must be going across there. <laughs> My name is Prabhupada Bhutta. I have been living in Australia for 40 years. My practice is just next door to your family court. My daughter is a, a family court mediator. I've taught uh, uh, Islamic law overseas before I came here. And from a purely Muslim perspective, since we are among the street people, many of whom are uh, Muslims, um, I think it raises uh, a lot of questions. Uh, whatever the suggestion is, firstly, the extraterritoriality of how we can make laws about what may be happening overseas. And uh, uh, looking at what is already happening is that uh, there's no um, impunity or any bar on any Muslim living in Australia to go overseas and marry multiple times. Um, it is not a crime from Australian perspective. And uh, uh, other than the fact that uh, those legitimate children uh, need to be brought back because they are sired by, uh, if the marriage is solemnized overseas, and it is uh, irrespective of whether there was a marriage or not, and even if all these children are considered to be, if anything, um, um, they are born from a wedlock between an Australian citizen, and I'm aware of that incident. I mean, it's not something that you have never heard. I'm sure 
the family court has to grapple with those children many times. Even polygamy is practiced even in Sydney as we speak. We are aware of that fact. Um, so if you cannot uh, make laws, and I'm aware of only one law where uh, men, we need Australian, to very shortly. Yeah, very Australian shortly. men who go overseas and have common knowledge with uh, uh, underage girls, that is proscribed, that is criminalized. That's the only, um, uh, you see, act that I'm aware of. Otherwise, to actually make laws to uh, criminalize activity somehow in overseas countries uh, will perhaps be impossible unless uh, uh, there is some political will about it. But it all boils down to uh, choices. I mean, men and people who are Australian citizens, if they make a choice of doing whatever they are doing overseas, well then how can we really regulate them? I mean, that's really the issue. Thank you. Can I just answer that shortly if I can? Um, what, one thing that we can be sure of is that in the technological sense, the horse is bolted. Um, there's no doubt. I mean, the technology is there and people will use it. So we can't say you can't have surrogacy arrangements. People will use surrogacy arrangements. And, and people want to. I mean, people used to adopt. There's now problems with adoption because of the international convention. It's harder to. There are a lot of checks and balances which are entirely appropriate. It's much harder to get a baby um, because by the time they've done all the checks and balances, the children are about over a year old. But also, surrogacy provides you generally with the genetic connection to one party, which people want. So it's going to happen. So we've got to deal with it. We can't ignore it. And we can't make laws in those countries. But as I've been trying to say, what we can do is make laws around how you can bring the child back. And that is what I think. I know that people do, because their hands up. There's a gentleman writes the baby and hands down first. Take one, take one last question from that gentleman. The people that wanted to ask questions here. Approach the chief after we finish. Gentlemen, back. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Justin Dowd, and I'm a family lawyer here in Sydney. <coughs> chief Justice, I, the question I wanted to ask, and it, and it really displays my ignorance more than anything, is whether there are whether there is research. Uh, of a longitudinal basis um, of children born of surrogacy arrangements and whether they have um, issues arising from from the style of their birth, if that's the right word, um, or not. And I understand it may well not be, but I'd be curious to know what the research shows in that regard. Justin, I'm not aware of any research so far. There might be. There is some research. You can ask me after. Oh, I can take So I hope there was some research by now. Yes. But I mean, you only have to look at what's happening. I think the sperm donor, the sperm donor issue is a, a very good one in a, in a similar way. I mean, children are now looking for the sperm donor father. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we would be absolutely naive to think that the appropriate time, and perhaps even now, that children born of these rooms would not want to know who they're Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, the young lady here would be happy to talk to you afterwards, and the gentleman behind, I think, had a question as well, if you were happy to talk to them later. Uh, uh, we appreciate um, the Honourable Chief Justice Dave Bright for coming to present on such an important topic, and I would now like to call upon Professor Gillian Triggs, the President of the Australian Human Rights Commission to present a gift of thanks to the Honourable Chief Justice Diane Bryant from the Affinity Intercultural Foundations of Heart. My task was to thank you, uh, Chief Justice. Um, you've raised some extraordinarily important questions, uh, and indeed from a human rights perspective, um, uh, but your leadership in this area and opening up questions uh, is extremely important, so we hope that we'll, we'll start to see some action. And this is a, a really splendid uh, yes. genuine face. I mean, genuine face. Um, genuine face. <laughs> <laughs> genuine face. <laughs> genuine face. <laughs> it looks absolutely <laughs> splendid, so thank you very much. <laughs>